print labels at home for my cottage food operation home bakery business. In this video, I'm going to be showing you one method that you can use to affordably print your labels at home. We're going to start out by visiting the avery.com website and using the template for a shipping label that you've already purchased. So for this example, I'm going to be using an Avery label that I already have. So let's start out by going to avery.com and this is a label company. They but they make and sell um, label templates and actual physical labels. So you can see an example of the labels here. And the website contains places where you can buy the labels, where you can have them print the labels for you, or where you can access a template to format your page to print from the labels that you have bought. So that's what we're going to do today. I have purchased the Avery product number 6427. This is what I use for a lot of my different home baked products because it's two inches by four inches and it gives me a lot of room where I can include my product name, my location where it's been manufactured and all of the things that are required in my state for my food labeling. So the first thing that we're going to do here is um, go to find a template and Avery is going to uh, well first we'll enter our product number 6427 is the one I happen to have 2 by 4 there's 10 on a page and then we're going to click on start design and then they are uh, I've actually already signed in at this point it may ask you to create an account um, this is a free service, so you would just have to enter your email and create a password, and then it will allow you to access all of the different designs that you can use for creating your label. So you can see that they have some templates here that you can choose. Um, for example, if you're creating like a holiday cookie kit, you may want to add a little graphic to the bottom. This is a larger label, so you might have room for that. Uh, you can choose from any of the templates here to customize your label however you want. So I'm going to go ahead and select the plain design and show you how I customize it for my home baked. I'm going to use cookies today as an example. So it asks you if you want to edit one or edit all of the labels on the sheet. You can have the option to print different labels uh, on one sheet. And today I'm going to uh, do them all the same. So I'm going to select edit all. And over here on the left are the different editing tools. And I will choose to add a text box. And so this is going to be uh, an example of a sugar cookie is what we're using today. So in another tab over here, I've got a recipe for my um, no chill rolled sugar cookie. It's a great recipe, it doesn't spread, it's super easy. I'm happy to share it in another post, but that's what I'm going to be using here. So uh, for my title, uh, according to my cottage laws, I need to have my title of the product on the label. So what I call it in my bakery, a, a no chill sugar cookie is not exactly what I want to call it for my customers. So I'm going to call it a sugar cookie cutout. I can use that name in Christmas time, I can use it at Easter, I can use it if I'm making heart shaped cookies at Valentine's Day. So I'm going to keep it fairly generic and call it a sugar cookie cutout. And so that is the title of my item, which is required by my, my state for my cottage law operation labeling. So over here, my font is a 16. I don't want this whole thing at 16. My state has no requirement for the font size. 
however yours might. Uh, they might say it needs to be eight point or larger, needs to be in black ink. This is where you would adjust your font size, your font color. Um, you can make it colorful if you'd like, or you can make it meet your state requirements as well. So I, for this label, this works well for me because I don't have to include nutritional information. So this is a great example. If your state does not require nutritional information on the menu, or excuse me, on the label. So my state requires the name of the product and the location where it was manufactured and this is where I make my items and let's say I'm at one two three um, sugar cookie lane I wish I lived at one two three sugar cookie lane and I live in uh, Overland Park Kansas in that's just a made up address there uh, so that I can meet my requirements. And then if I'd like to change the layout of this, I can spread it out a little bit more. You can alter uh, your um, formatting however you like. And then I'm going to add another text box and this one will be for my ingredients. So again, this is not for the states where you're required to uh, have any type of nutritional information. That will be in another video, which uh, we'll reference at the end of this one. So what we need to do next is to come back here. Where'd you go? Uh, is to add our ingredients. Now, the requirement is that I list my ingredients in descending order of predominance in the recipe. So I go back over here to my spreadsheet and so this is my recipe for my no spread sugar cookies and you can see that in this recipe all of my ingredients are in the same unit of measure for example my butter is eight ounces and my granulated sugar is 15 ounces so it's very easy to see which one has more in the recipe uh, my flour is 18 ounces so this is the most predominant ingredient on my recipe in my recipe Not sure why I keep disappearing my text. Avery doesn't like you to navigate away and come back to it. So in the state that I live in, I do not need to break down the ingredients within the flour. I can use the common name for it, but you may need to look at your bag of flour and list anything that your flour is enriched with. If it says niacin and iron and you know that extended ingredient list, if you need to list that, this is where you would go ahead and say the, you know, uh, other ingredients that your flour has in it. But so the state that I'm in doesn't require it. And this is the simple version of a food label. So we're going to keep it simple. Flour is my most predominant ingredient. And my next one is sugar. And the next most prominent ingredient is butter. You can see how simple this format is. And then I've got egg. And then I get down into things that are teaspoons. So I've got vanilla, salt, and cinnamon, all at the same quantities. And then lastly, I have nutmeg and clove. So that's what was required in the state of Kansas. If you live in a state that has uh, this type of labeling requirement where you don't have to have a nutritional label and you don't have to list any allergens and you don't need to break down your uh, common ingredients into more detail, this is a, a great option. So the next thing that I'm going to do here is go to 
print this label because I'm printing this at home and on Avery it's going to ask if you want to print it yourself or let them print it for you and you want to print it yourself and then this little pop-up is an area where you can select how many of those labels you want to print so if I only want to print four of those I can say print from label one to four and then it shows me over here on this preview screen what that might look like and uh, but I don't I want to print them all and then this adjust print alignment is going to allow you to make sure that your print area lines up with the lines of the sticker so you don't have any of your text overflowing off into another sticker you want to fit it all within the print area sometimes they don't align quite right so in this area you can adjust slightly up slightly down uh, however you see fit and one tip is that if you print your first sheet on to just a regular piece of printer paper and then you can hold it up against your template and make sure that things line up once you adjust your print alignment it will save that setting so from there on out all of your labels that you print there will line up next thing I'm going to do is get my PDF to print and they're going to recommend that I save it and if you save it uh, then you don't need to type this in every time and you can build up a database on Avery of all of your saved labels which is really convenient so I'll call this one sugar cookie cutouts and I'll save it to my account and um, then it will allow you to access that PDF that you created so this is what my printout looks like and then from here I'll just go to print it and I'll just use my uh, web browsers drop down printing option and that'll print right to my printer at home and that is how I can meet the needs of my labeling requirement with an at home printer and I just want to pop back over to a different page for a second and show you what it looks like when you save your designs Mm, and the way we're going to do that is to open all of our safe designs so this is what I want to show you uh, these are all the different labels that I've saved and say I haven't made my gluten-free zucchini bread in a while but I'm ready to make it again I've got a customer requesting it I can just pop up that and these are all different templates it remembers which template you prefer for each product and you can build up your database of all of your different items that you like to print on those Avery templates so that's just a quick tutorial on how you can print at home using your home printer to make your cottage food home bakery product labels.